I just want to ask you a question, just with a little bit of a flying theme today. Who can remember watching television back in 2005 when they saw the A380 first actually take off? Do you remember seeing that on TV and thinking, wow, what an aeroplane? Now, I don't know about you, but I work in the software industry and I worry about aeroplanes that are really controlled completely by software. <laughs> and I'm a pilot. I've actually had three engine failures in aircraft and I've had a mini aerobatic pit special kind of aeroplane that sheared a drive bolt in the, in the drive system and I walked away from that landing. My father always taught me that any landing you walk away from is a good one. But I survived that. So I've always had a lot of interest in aviation and I know Qantas pilots. And if Qantas pilots were the ones that chose whether Qantas had a fleet of exclusively Boeing or a fleet exclusively of Airbus, which aircraft do you think they would choose? The answer is absolutely Boeing. And the reason is amongst Qantas pilots, they certainly believe that Boeing is better quality. They perceive that Airbus is really built to a price, but that's a secondary issue. The big thing that concerns Qantas pilots and pilots generally about Airbus is that the philosophy of the control systems is that the computers can override the pilot. If the pilot seeks to fly the aircraft outside an envelope, the computers will push the nose down to stop it stalling. Now that can be a good thing, but pilots generally don't like the fact that the computers can override them. And I was always, when I saw this aircraft first released, I always thought it would be an amazing thing to fly in, but I don't want to be an early adopter of new technology when my life is in its hands. And the first time I flew in an Airbus uh, A380 back from Singapore, it's actually on QF32. We're going to talk about that particular flight and what happened just a couple of years ago. Um, but I remember thinking, what an incredible aircraft, but I'm not that happy that Qantas is one of the first airlines in the world that actually bought it. Let's think about how you transform an organisation. I just want to make three, three recommendations here. The first thing is, I think uh, we need a sales culture in our organisations. I don't mean a sales culture within the sales organisation, I mean a sales culture within the entire organisation. This concept that everybody sells inside an organisation, it's incredibly important. And I'm going to give you a pretty odd example of someone that embraces this. I talked about the A380 earlier, in 2005 at first flew. In 2010, I actually published my book, uh, which you can all have a free copy of today if you'd like. But in 2010, when I was publishing my book, there was an A380 QF32 flying from Singapore to Sydney, and Richard de Krepney was the pilot in command, and this happened. Now, we all know that aeroplanes can fly perfectly well without one engine. They glide perfectly well without any engines, but they can fly perfectly well without one or two engines. That engine just didn't fail, uh, it exploded like a missile. It shot debris faster than the speed of sound through the fuselage, luckily not at passengers, it would have got killed, but down where all of the landing gear was under the wings and took out all of the landing gear and plane's hydraulics. It took out all of the hydraulics on the wings. The plane was 85% degraded in the ability to control it and there was fuel leaking from everywhere and they couldn't transfer fuel from the 13 different fuel tanks that they have on these things. So, the longer they flew, the more imbalanced the plane was getting. They had no flaps, which you need to put down to slow a plane down to land. Now, I told you earlier that I'm not a fan of Airbus. I'm converted. I read this book in two and a half days. I just devoured it. I, I highly recommend the book. You'll see it at any of the airport bookshops. But it's interesting what happened. When, when that engine exploded, people on the ground found bits of their Qantas aeroplane landing in their backyard. I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a little graph up in the top left-hand corner there. That's Qantas's share price. This is the power of social media. People began to tweet up in Indonesia about a Qantas plane falling out of the sky. Alan Joyce was in a, a limousine in Sydney uh, with his marketing director in the back seat with him, and the head of investor relations phoned Alan Joyce and said, do you know why our share price is falling through the floor? That was the first sign of trouble that Qantas management had that they had a problem with the plane. The power of social media is incredible. And people think about social media as I want to project my brand out into the marketplace with social media, and yes, that's important. But the real power is what Jonathan was talking about. It's what IBM are world leaders in, and that's, that's listening to social media, gathering information through social media to see what's happening out there in the marketplace. What customers are complaining about your brand? What opportunities are coming? coming up over the horizon that you can go and engage with by listening well in the marketplace. And Richard de Krepney saved the aircraft, it's an incredible story. But when he landed, 
he went and spent over an hour with all of the passengers in the terminal before they went out and, uh, and, and saw the press and faced the onslaught. And he said to them, when you fly Qantas, you're flying with a premium airline. We're not a budget carrier. You have every right to expect more and you're gonna get more with us. He said, I'm gonna give you my personal mobile phone number. And he gave every passenger in the airplane his mobile phone number. He said, if Qantas doesn't treat you in a way that you know, makes you happy, you have my permission to call me. I want you to call me and tell me about it. If you have a journalist that's making wild claims that the plane was on fire and you want to talk to me about it, call me. Don't let a journalist tell you the plane was on fire, it wasn't. You know more than any of the journalists out there about what's happened. Full disclosure, completely informed them, completely transparent. And he adopted the, the role of a brand representative of a salesperson for Qantas. And what he did, and what's written in, in the book, QF32, is the best piece of marketing and PR and salesmanship that Airbus could ever have wished for. Because you read that book and go, that is the best engineered aeroplane in the history of the world. That it had that level of catastrophic failure and everybody lived. So this concept that everybody sells is important. We need systems in place where you service people, because service is the new sales model. Service people need to be listening for opportunities. Anybody who touches a customer is really a salesperson.